Hello, my name is Mike Ackerman and I'm a genetic cardiologist at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. I also serve as director of Mayo Clinic's Winland Smith Rice Genetic Heart Rhythm Clinic, the Winland Smith Rice Sudden Death Genomics Laboratory, and the Mayo Clinic Winland Smith Rice Comprehensive Sudden Cardiac Death Program. On behalf of all of our team, thank you for choosing Mayo Clinic and Mayo Clinic's Winland Smith Rice Genetic Heart Rhythm Clinic for your care. It was a blessed privilege to meet you and to care for you and your entire family. I trust that your entire Mayo Clinic experience was nothing less than amazing. Over the course of my career, many families like yours have asked the following question. Dr. Ackerman, how did you get interested in my family's disease anyway? Tell us your journey. Well, during our one to three hours that we got to spend together, when asked that question, I typically have given you a quick 30 second soundbite so that we could return the focus back upon who matters most, you and your family as my patients. But because of your interest, I have been asked to tell you a little bit more about me and my journey. So here goes. I guess we have to date it back to mm, age 12, 13, 14. I was part of a so-called gifted and talented program, that's probably hard to believe, where I had was asked or I asked and I was offered to get to shadow and watch surgery in my small town of Sheldon, Iowa, a town of 5,000. And there I was watching surgeries out of my interest in medicine at that young teenage age and uh, my career was almost over before it started. You see what happened is I'm watching a gallbladder surgery and wasn't feeling that well that day. Long story short, I'm standing watching the surgery and I can still hear that charge nurse voice ringing in my ear for crying out loud, he fell into the field and down I went, fainted right into uh, the surgical field, head between my knees, sitting on the floor, thinking that my career is over before it starts at age 13 or 14, get ushered into the surgeon's lounge and after finishing his surgery, our small town surgeon put his hand on my shoulder and he said, many a man has fallen at my table. And he just encouraged me, but needless to say, surgery was probably not gonna be in the, in the makings for me. I love science. Graduated from high school, went to Luther College in Decorah, Iowa. And there I majored in chemistry and mathematics. And for a time at Luther College, I really wrestled with whether I should go into medicine or go into the ministry. And uh, uh, there, I ultimately came to the conclusion that medicine would be my ministry. And I would have an opportunity to hopefully be a healer in that way. And then I got accepted into the medical school at Mayo Clinic. And I can, I'll never forget receiving my acceptance letter from Dr. Knox. And I couldn't believe that I was being given the privilege of training at Mayo Clinic. Back then, we were just the Mayo Medical School. Now, some many years later, I started there in 1988. So it's been over 30 years now here in Rochester, Minnesota. Then Mayo Medical School. Now the Mayo Clinic Alex School of Medicine. I love our medical school. But anyway, I was accepted into the MD-PhD program to be a medical scientist and did my medical school, then left for graduate school and, and trained under an incredible man, Dr. David Clapham. And I love that guy. And he, uh, my project was very basic science. It was in basic structure function of these peculiar things that didn't seem to matter much or didn't seem to matter much to me or any humans back then called ion channels. I studied these ion channels at a very raw, basic, scientific, uh, some might say esoteric level and uh, survived graduate school. Graduate school was some of the richest uh, years of my life, but they were certainly also the most difficult and most painful years of my life at the same time. 
In fact, I completed my PhD, returned to medical school to finish my MD, vowing never, never to do science again. David, my mentor, Dr. Clapham, he said, you'll be back. And I said, no, I won't. But returned to medical school, graduated from medical school with my MD and my PhD in 1995, stayed at Mayo Clinic for pediatric residency training, uh, stayed at Mayo Clinic for uh, my pediatric cardiology fellow, and then joined the faculty of Mayo Clinic in the summer of 2000. But what happened uh, during those five years after finishing medical school was life-changing. You see, it was because of you, a patient, uh, a patient that I'll never forget, who I admitted in November of 1996 during my first night of call as a second-year pediatric resident uh, in the pediatric intensive care unit at our children's hospital here at Mayo Clinic. Ten-year-old boy nearly drowned at one of our local pools, an indoor pool because it was November, Rochester, Minnesota. And thankfully for him, he was resuscitated by first responders who ran out to his car and got an automatic external defibrillator and shocked him back. And we received the message in our pediatric intensive care unit that we would be getting this 10-year-old boy who drowned or nearly drowned at the local pool and he was resuscitated by external defibrillation. And as the admitting resident, the admitting physician, I thought, that's really unusual because most pediatric drownings or near drownings have nothing to do with the heart. I wonder if he has that long QT thing. You see, the timing is everything. So this is November 96. Remember, just the year before, 1995, Dr. Mark Keating and the team in Salt Lake City had the breakthrough because they discovered the genetic root cause of long QT syndrome in 1995. You know what the root cause is? Defective ion channels of the heart. It all came together that night with that child because there in front of me, I had a close encounter with a child who nearly died, a sudden arrhythmic death due to defective ion channels of the heart that brought about a syndrome called long QT syndrome. Some might say the rest is history because that was my epiphany where at that night I knew who I was going to become when I grew up. I was going to become a physician who would dedicate my life to taking care of families at risk of sudden cardiac death due to genetic heart defects in the heart's rhythm system from long QT syndrome, would later become equally uh, passionate about genetic heart muscle defects like hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So who I am today is in good measure because of that admission of that 10-year-old that night some 22 and a half years ago, and I thank him for changing my life, for allowing me to discover who I was supposed to become. In fact, I got so excited about that case that I broke out of residency uh, after that rotation was finished and went into a molecular genetics laboratory, the laboratory of Dr. Stephen Thibodeau here at Mayo Clinic. And I said, I wanna find his and his family's genetic cause and did a postdoc. During that postdoc, uh, met uh, an incredible man, Dave Tester, who became then, some 20 years ago, and still is now, the lead scientist in the Winland Smith Rice Sudden Death Genomics Laboratory. We found Jonathan's mutation, and guess what it was? A long QT1 causative mutation, because it wouldn't take much many years after that, very short before, we and others showed that when there is a swimming triggered event and it is because of long QT syndrome, it almost always is because of type 1 long QT syndrome. And then that ushered in sort of the rest where I went into pediatric cardiology fellowship and there one of my huge life mentors uh, Dr. David Driscoll took me under his wing to mentor me 
as to how do you become a complete physician, a clinician, one who is as passionate about the truth and the rigor of the science, but also the care of the patient. And he also believed in my vision. And at that time, back in 1998, even while I was a fellow in training, we started the Genetic Heart Rhythm Clinic, now 20 years ago. And at that time, we had the hand-in-glove relationship of having a clinic devoted to families at risk of sudden cardiac death because of genetic heart rhythm diseases like long QT syndrome. And at the same time, having a research laboratory, what we call the Sudden Death Genomics Laboratory, to get smarter about these sudden cardiac death predisposing conditions like yours, whether it's long QT syndrome or CPVT or Brugada syndrome, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, or ARVC. And we have done our best to do both, to take care of families like yours, incredible families, and to try to get smarter on your behalf about your diseases. What are the triggers? What is the risk? What are the treatment options? How can we help families with these conditions not only live, but to thrive despite them? So when asked, how did it all happen? In a 10 minute nutshell, that's the story. Well, thank you for asking me to stroll down memory lane for these past 10 minutes. <laughs> it was quite, uh, I enjoyed it. I hope you did. It's been a great journey so far, and thank you for blessing me so much with your lives. My life is full in good measure because of you and your family. While the first 20 years of my career have exceeded my wildest dreams, I trust that our best years together are still in front of us. So on behalf of all of us in Mayo Clinic, Winland Smith Rice Genetic Heart Rhythm Clinic, Thank you for asking me about my story. My team and I are sure looking forward to seeing you again in the near future.